you blame the government for the Great Depression of 1929 to 1933. And of course, uh, you had to blame FDR for all he did. But most people uh, feel that he saved this uh, free economy of ours. Given the catastrophe of the Great Depression, there's no doubt in my mind that emergency government measures were necessary. The government had made a mess. Not FDR's government, it was government that preceded him, although it was mainly the Federal Reserve System which really wasn't subject to election. But once FDR came in, he did two very different kinds of things. Well, had the government made a mess by what it did, or but, uh, but, but by what it didn't do? By what it did, by its monetary policies, which forced and produced a sharp decline in the total quantity of money. It was a mismanagement of the monetary apparatus. If there had been no Federal Reserve System, in my opinion, there would not have been a Great Depression at that time. But given that the Depression had occurred, and it was a catastrophe of an almost unimaginable kind, I do not fault at all, indeed, on the contrary, I commend Roosevelt for some of the emergency measures he took. They obviously weren't of the best, but they were emergency measures, and you had an emergency, and you had to deal with them. And the emergency measures, such as relief programs, even the WPA, which was a make-work program, these served a very important function. He also served a very important function by giving people confidence in themselves. His great speech about the only thing we have to fear is fear itself was certainly a, a very important element in restoring confidence to the public at large. But he went much beyond that. He also started to change, under public pressure, the kind of government system we had. If you go beyond the emergency measures to the, what he regarded as the reform measures, things like NRA and AAA, which were declared unconstitutional, but then from there on to the Social Security system, to the... Uh, uh, All right, well, take, take the Social Security system for a minute. Uh, the people wanted that. They wanted that protection. Not they were all. frightened. They Not wanted welfare. Not at all. Well, you said pressure. Who Pressure from whom? Pressure from people who were expressing what they thought the public ought to have. There was no widespread public demand for Social Security programs. The demand no, for... The... No demand for welfare with 13 million oh, people Oh, there was a demand for welfare and assistance. I was separating out the emergency measures from the permanent measures. Social Security in the first 10 years of its existence helped almost no one and only took in money. Very few people qualified for benefits. It wasn't an emergency measure. It was a long-term measure. And it had to be sold to the American people, primarily by the group of reformers, intellectuals, new dealers, the people associated with, with uh, FDR. The Social Security is one of the most misleading programs. It has been sold as an insurance program. It's not an insurance program. It's a program which combines a bad tax, a flat tax on wages up to a maximum, with a very inequitable and uneven system of giving benefits under which some people get much, some people get little. So that Social Security... Well, would you, would you now abolish Social Security? I would not go back on any of the commitments that the government has made, but I would certainly reform Social Security in a way that would end in its ultimate elimination.